Thank you, David, and thank you to Tim. Twofold, really. One for the invite to talk, and obviously also for the introduction to the cytoreductive nephrectomy and what you all need to think about prior to doing this on patients. The bit you all know, although we still pick up a lot of kidney cancer, increasingly more small cancers, still around about one in five of the cancers we're going to detect are advanced mesotatic cancer. And with metastases, more often than not, they've got multiple sites of metastases. And these patients have not got curative disease. And as David's alluded to there, over the last 10 years, our oncology colleagues have developed an awful lot more range of drug treatments that are available to try and prolong life change patients sort of prolongation of their survival time with their loved ones and we have improved to a degree the surgical options available to us to remove the kidney so my definition for the talk today within 10 minutes 15 minutes cytoreductive nephrectomy is where in the face of metastatic disease you plan to remove the kidney to go on to try and produce and allow oncological colleagues to give systemic oncological therapy to try and prolong survival and the rationale for this over the years has been that the primary tumour somehow acts as a sink that takes away useful antibodies, useful immune cells that might reduce metastases, or it helps the actual primary tumour secrete proangenic factors that stimulate metastases. And the rationale being the removal of the primary tumour hopefully will then reduce metastatic disease and improve survival thereafter. So, as David mentioned, our data that we know about and we trust is going back to 2001. Work in the late 90s, both in the States and then in Europe, similar trials where we sort of compared interferon treatment with or without nephrectomy showed without doubt that we did improve survival. The two studies produced curves along similar lines but differing number of patients, showing that we improved disease from around about a median overall survival of 9 to 10 months to anything from about 15 to 19 months. And there was definite improvement. And obviously what we do need to remember and remind our oncology colleagues of, within interferon, we did still get complete responses and definite survivals. Over the last decade, clearly that's been revolutionized by the targeted therapy that's now available, and very, very little interferon treatment is used for metastatic kidney cancer, and there's a variety of treatments, and I don't think we really know how to use this and in what order. That is obviously one of the studies that sort of are based on this, but there are many more that have revolutionized the targeted therapy are now used in place of interferon. Again, you should all rem remember, if you can read the bottom bullet point, that in virtually all of these studies, the vast, vast majority of these patients had lost their kidney. So the primary renal tumour had been gone, or been removed. But this is one of the sort of the main ways we would try and treat. There's a variety of different ways we treat metastatic disease with a variety of oncological agents. The majority obviously being targeted therapy. Very little interleukin or interferon is now used. So that should change how we look or how we use nephrectomy for people who've got metastatic kidney cancer. I think most of us would still use a palliative nephrectomy where we're trying to remove symptoms and to make patients' symptomatic quality of life easier for the last 6 to 20, 24 months of life. Clearly with careful planning, careful imaging, if you've got one solitary metastasis that appears resectable, I think it's perfectly reasonable to aim with decent, honest counselling for a planned curative nephrectomy and resection of that solitary metastasis. But is it still feasible and should we still be doing cytoreductive nephrectomy with systemic targeted therapy which has not yet been proven in the same way that interferon was? As we'll talk, there is no present prospective trial, but there is obviously one open at the moment. So for these sorts of patients that we do see, and relatively small numbers are fairly fit and are certainly able to stand quite large operations, <coughs> what do we do if we remove the kidney and we leave them essentially with asymptomatic metastatic disease? We're obviously all strapped for cash. Nice guidance is not particularly clear. And just to give you a flavour, in Sheffield or in North Trent, we sort of compromise with the PCTs that they very easily would give funding for people who've got symptomatic metastatic disease but they then will not look kindly when you go and ask for symptom treatment when they've got no symptoms. So if I take a kidney out on a relatively young patient who leaves asymptomatic pulmonary mets, it is very, very difficult to get them to fund TKI treatment thereafter. 
So essentially, practically, we in North Trent have done less and less cytoreductive nephrectomy along these lines. And obviously, as you all know, these sorts of patients, and as Tim has alluded to, these sort of patients typically will have either early renal vein invasion or they'll have lymph node disease, which make the renal surgery quite difficult, and they obviously are going to have a multiple sites of uh, metastatic disease. So I'm not going to talk too much of the techniques. So obviously, colleagues either side of this talk are going to talk more of that. But just to sort of emphasize, the vascular control is difficult. They tend to have quite large lymph node disease, which make getting hold of the renal, uh, renal artery particularly difficult. And although increasing numbers of us are getting very skilled with laparoscopy, most of this surgery, I think, still is going to be open transabdominal surgery. But that depends on your cancer center and the skill set you've got but I think increasingly it should be coming to the cancer centers and more people should be doing more of the surgery in smaller numbers of hands. And again, just to talk about the different options. So we've got the curative nephrectomy if you're going for the solitary met. You've got the palliative nephrectomy that is reasonable. But as Tim alluded to, we don't really know the place of neoadjuvant therapy to try and downstay the disease that might make resection of the nephrectomy more amenable. And we don't know if we're going to use pre-surgical treatment, when we should do it. Can we sort of target different lesions and pick out the ones who might do better with the nephrectomy? But the main aim of this talk remains the site of reductive nephrectomy, and should we follow it, should we be doing it, and then go on to follow it with what sort of systemic therapy. So as David alluded to, there's not many good studies over the last three to five years that can help us. These are four that I would select to briefly mention to you. The first one is a study from the States. I think eight or nine centers produced a large retrospective study looking at over 300 patients where they analyzed the outcomes with and without cytoreductive nephrectomy. And they showed an improved median overall survival from nine months to 19 months, which was obviously in keeping with what was shown before with the interferon studies and seemed to persist with multivariant analysis but they did make the very strong point that it's younger, fitter, better performance status were likely to do well. Poorer patients, poorer risk group with multiple sites of metastases do very badly. This Canadian paper was particularly an oncological paper looking at the outcomes of tyrosine kinase inhibitor treatment versus or compared to interferon, but as a subset, they pulled out people who sort of had a prior nephrectomy prior to the treatment and uh, they suggested that there was an improvement with cytoreduct nephrectomy, although it was very retrospective and the study was not set out to do this. Of these two studies, smaller study on the right there, again from America, smaller number of patients, but again retrospective, suggesting an improvement with cytoreduct nephrectomy with targeted therapy. On the whole, that these are sinitinib, serafinib type treatments. Just to draw your attention to this paper, and really making the point that if you don't consider surgery, if you just use targeted therapy and the primary kidney stays in place, the median overall survival appears to be around 9 to 10 months, which again goes back to and is in keeping with the data that we found on the interferon studies from 2001. And most of these studies would suggest that. So where do we go and what is open now? And I think that your attention has already been drawn to this. The Carmina study that was sort of started in France is trying to ascertain whether cytoreductive nephrectomy does still have a useful place now that we're virtually all using targeted therapies. And this particularly is using sinitinib. So it's an international multi-center trial trying to compare the results of using sinitinib treatment with or without a nephrectomy. And they are aiming for around about 1,200 patients, around about 500 to 600 from the UK. And increasingly, a number of you will be probably just about beginning to enter patients in. We're just about open in North Trent. The trial objectives, the primary aim is to see whether the initial nephrectomy does improve or impact on survival with people with metastatic renal cell carcinoma that go on to have a sinistinib treatment. Clearly, there's a number of secondary objectives. And as Tim mentioned before, it will be interesting to see the number of patients that are able to go on to get sinitinib after this sort of treatment. But hopefully, this sort of trial is selecting reasonably good performance status patients. So hopefully, they will go on to complete the full trial. 
As I think Noel mentioned last night, there is this other trial open that is slightly different in the sense that it is uh, looking at when you use sunitinib at different stages prior to a nephrectomy. And this might impact on uh, trial accrual because it is going to be a similar sort of patient set of metastatic disease and we're only going to have so many patients to put into both studies. But I would urge you all to consider entry to both trials as they both have got very important messages to answer and this is the only way we'll really take things forward. So really to wrap things up, my penultimate slide, after 2001, we all looked to and did offer our patients cytoreductive nephrectomy and undoubtedly many patients have been helped and their survival has been prolonged by this. Whether it remains the case with the targeted therapy that's now increasingly available to her is still in doubt and I would urge you all to go for the Carmina trial to know that we are doing our patients justice by doing that. It is difficult. They obviously have multiple metastatic sites and increasingly larger populations are getting elderly, tend to be obese, and they're not as good operative candidates. But hopefully, if we can get the message clear in our own minds, we can then pass that on to the patients as to what we should be doing to them. And it's one of the ones I, must admit I struggle with when I sit in the clinic with a patient to try and advise them on whether they should undergo or consider a cytoreductive nephrectomy. Undoubtedly, we can do considerable harm not necessarily in killing the patients, but actually losing time for them with their loved ones. This is clearly disease that is going to kill patients. We are trying to prolong survival and aim to improve quality of survival. And so to that end, the main aim of this talk, I think, is to encourage you all to enter people into the trials. And that's a very good article if you want to understand the various sorts of surgery around metastatic disease. Thank you very much.